Hi, this is Toby and today I'll be showing you how to grow acacia from seeds. Now I know I made a video on this previously and it's become pretty popular and I've gotten a lot of questions on that video. So I'll be making another one answering all your questions. Now before I start, the seeds and the seedlings in that video didn't make it. I tried making the video again with seeds fresh from the acacia in front of my house. It did germinate, a lot of it germinated, but they didn't survive either for some reason. They just got weak and started dying. So this is basically my third attempt. So after doing some more research, I found out there's actually two step, two ways to doing this. So the first way is obviously the one I showed you in the first video. And that is getting some kettle with boiling water. And with the seeds, we pour the boiling water onto the seeds and it's a bit hot to carry. So obviously you can tell it's boiling. If I can do this without splashing the water everywhere. It's boiling water. If I put my hand in, it's really hot. And this will just soften the seed shell of the seeds out on the shell on the outside the seeds of the black part. And that allows water to penetrate through into the interior of the shell. And they have a thick shell coating. And remember what I'm doing, the technique I'm doing are for acacias that are in Australia or what we call them wattles. But I know in Africa, there's also those flat top trees in the acacia family. And for the purpose of this video, we are only talking about Australian acacias. So this is the first part. I'll see if I can, it's still pretty hot, but there we go. I'll put it over there and that'll sit for around 24 hours soaking. And now I'll actually show you the second way, which is filing the seeds. The second step that I've seen people do online and on websites is actually physically damaging the seeds. So again, in case you're wondering where I got the seeds from, I'm just here to show you the seed pods. This is what a seed pod looks like. This is Acacia podarolifolia, I think. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but I'll put the name on screen so you can check. I'm just gonna get some seeds. You can see already there are very healthy seeds. And I actually have a file here. This is in just your regular file. It's not dusty or anything. And what I'm actually gonna do is scrape parts of the seed off so it actually so the inside can actually be revealed so i'm just gonna file away at the seed oh dropped it so if you can see i actually rubbed broken the skin and a little bit of the seeds showing so now i toss it in water and the inside should now receive water and soak it up i might have sanded a bit too much off you want to go slightly before that and i recommend not sanding the tips because that might be where the growing points are so that was a pretty bad job but if i sand the sides of it it should be better so i'll do another one and i'll show you so i found an even more efficient way now i have a proper sanding block you can use it but i'm using a pot with sandpaper on it and literally scraping the seeds like that. so i think this will be enough now again putting them in the water and they're gonna soak for around 24 hours, just like the ones we boiled. And the next day we'll get some things and we'll plant them. So it was next to that and we'll wait for 24 hours. So we're gonna be planting the seeds now. Now, first I'm gonna bring the two over. And before I show you, we've got some different results from the boiling water and the scarification or well, using physical damage. This is heat scarification and this is physical. You can see with water, the seeds plumped up a bit and that's pretty normal, but you see the ones that we actually scratched properly, they have actually plumped up a lot. If I just put it next to it, you can see the size difference of those two seeds. And that's what we want. We want the seeds to absorb the water and plump up. So first I'm gonna plant these the ones that are soaked in the hot water will go in a pot on the left, in the smaller pot. So this is just some bark I'm using, some bark based compost. And I'm just placing the seeds in. I'll push them down after I put all the seeds away and give it a water. Now, some of them is that we haven't done properly. You can see they're still quite small and hard because it didn't 
the shell didn't break, but for the ones that were successful, even the one I accidentally rubbed too much off, it's grown a lot bigger. So that's the result we want. A big seed. And I think this is actually going to germinate quicker than the water. So we might get some astounding results. As before, I only used the water boiling method, which works. You get the same, around the same, which you should get around the same germination rate. Last time, I think I got like the germination rate to be over 80%. So, but the seeds after their first year, they all died back for some reason. So I'm going to see if there's anything different with the ones that I scratched the coating with. I think there will be a difference. There's already a difference now. So after I water these and put them in the position, I'll show you. So here they are, the seeds in the pot, well covered. And this is gonna be here. And once something actually starts growing, I'll show you. So the pot that I had, um, I think this was the one that was scratched. It's actually germinated faster. So here is one that's starting to germinate. I think that's also another one, I'm not sure. But we've got two, and I think that one might be coming up soon. But if we look at the hot water one, I don't really see anything coming up. So I think this method might actually be more effective when compared to the hot water in terms of reducing germination time. Now, germination rate, I'm not so sure because we've only got a bit starting to pop up but once more pop up i can start to tell you what's happening so so far it's these two so here's another update and i had to put slug pellets on just in case any slugs still come and eat seedlings and you can see we have a seedling over there seedling over there a seedling over here seedling over there. these are all the ones i scratched and that one the one with the little tip that's a bit broken i think that's the one that i scratched too much off so be careful to do that but if you just gently break the seed coat, you can see they do germinate fairly quickly as compared to um, boiling the seed coat and letting the, the water seep in that way. So we'll wait a bit longer and we'll see how these guys go. So I don't think any of these have sprouted just yet, but the ones that sprouted from scratching it, some of them are, again are coming up damaged. You can see the shoot is broken because when you scratch it, you could potentially damage the inside. So that's the downside of it. It does seem to germinate faster however and the seedlings still they look pretty much the same as if you boiled them so today we have the other acacia and we're using the water method starting to germinate and we've had rains for two weeks this is the one rare sunny day that we got so these guys will enjoy it if you look at the other seedlings they've already developed their little leaves so they are quite far ahead when compared to these guys but you can see when they germinate, there's actually no damage because I didn't scratch the seeds where some of these got a bit damaged and they died back because the bit of the inside got damaged, but they did ger these did germinate faster. But I think these will have a similar germination rate, but just maybe a slightly longer germination time. So we're gonna have to see. Here's another update of the acacias. The ones that I scratched, these are the ones that are remaining. And the ones that I burnt or actually put boiling water on, these are the ones that are remaining. There's one there. This one did kind of get damaged on the tips of the leaves. I don't know if that was before or after exiting the shell. If it was before, then it could be because of the scarification method. If it was after, then it'd be environmental factors. But still, you can see this actually had a quicker germination time and an equal germination rate. So maybe in the future, I'll use the scratching method more than the boiling water. Although it does take a bit more effort. So I just noticed that some of the waddles in this the one that germinated using the one with it, which I used sandpaper has started to die back. And I think it could have been the heat, but these are actually older than these. Remember from the ones that germinate from the water, these germinated later. They're much younger and in theory, they should be much more susceptible to heat damage because they're so young. And you can see these already have a lot of leaves while these don't. So even this is more soil. So these are being stronger and there's more coming out so that's very nice but i'm just going to move them slightly back so that actually i move them here so there's some shade they don't actually just burn but yeah we'll see how these go so here's another update and i added a bit of soil on both of them because when you water the soil gets washed out the one the pot and the soil level lowers 
Straight off the bat, I can tell that because I scratched the actual coating of the seed, it could have damaged the inside of the little embryo, which is why it came up, wasn't very healthy, and just died back. And we only had one. But you can see with boiling, it gives a kind of an even damage around the seed coat, so it's not that bad. And you can see a lot more. So now I'm gonna give it some fertilizer just to help it. I got some native fertilizer, so just just a bit. You don't want to overdo this. Just that much, that's enough. Same with that one, even less because there's only one plant in there. And we'll see how these develop. So this is actually the day after that long period of rain we got. And here is the one that was using this, the only one remaining from the scratching method. You can see it's not doing that well. It's a bit pale. The bud is still healthy, but it hasn't grown. But you look at the ones with the water method. Beautiful seedlings. I've never had them grow this big before. So I think this year is going to be a success with the seedlings. Look at that. I think it's because I actually fertilized my seedlings this time this year when I planted them. So they had enough energy to get past just that first stage of germination. So previously they'd all go to this stage and just die. But you see now the seedlings are making it past. So I think they're gonna have enough energy to survive the winter and we'll see what happens. So the weather is actually really cool now and a lot of things have changed color. If I can show you there, my maple has changed color. So it's quite cold now and I just gave these guys just a bit more fertilizer again because this, these couple of days I find that these guys they weren't growing that well some of them were a bit limp and so I just gave it a bit more fertilizer just to boost it a bit I find that you can see the other one that I didn't fertilize as much and the one that grew with the um the scratching method it's barely hanging on the last couple of years that's how I grow my seeds and this is when they'd usually die when they're out this big they die back but because we fertilized this, it's actually gone past that stage. You can see starting to grow the phyllodes or the false leaves and the real leaves will disappear soon. See on some of them, they've already disappeared, the new shoots. So this is really good. So this is gonna be the final update. And I don't think these guys have stopped growing during the winter. Even when we had temperatures at night down to one to two degrees Celsius, I don't think they got damaged. We got six seedlings in total from the boiling method that are still healthy and alive. Even the smallest one over here, the one that's just developing the phyllodes, will, I think it'll make it, these are phyllodes, not leaves. These are leaves, little things that will close up at night. These phyllodes don't move at all at night. These do close up at night. So if you grow these and you go look at them at night, they will be closed. These are some seedlings I got from my front yard before the winter and they seem to be growing as well. But if we look at the one with the scratching method, it's still like that. And that's what happened with my previous attempts. It'll grow to that stage and it'll just die. So I doubt this will make it to next season. But we've got these, so that's really good. Um, in terms of which method I prefer, again, I still prefer the water method. It's much quicker. But I reckon if you do this properly and not over scratch the seeds or control the scratching, you could probably manage to pull it off, but it takes a lot more effort. So that's why I like the hot water method. But anyways, now it's up to you to give this a try and let me know in the comment section what results you get. Um, the previous video I made on this subject, I'll unlist that video probably in a month or so after I upload this video. So yeah, this is going to be the main video about Acacias. But I hope you enjoyed this. I know it took a long time to record and there wasn't a lot of good videos in between. But I do hope you enjoyed this video and give this a try yourself. So thanks for watching this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share my channel around. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.